What is up YouTube fam? We're back here for another installation on the FK8. We want to keep enhancing cooling mods in the Type R. What we didn't do last time was heat wrap the front pipe when we installed the spoon exhaust. I went ahead and got some of the DEI titanium heat wrap. I also bought the heat shields that go to the downpipe. Now, you're gonna say, why'd you buy heat shields? Well, these come thermal coated. I guess Evasive sold a run of them. So we're gonna go ahead and attempt to install it today. <laughs> That's what we got going on here. It's hilarious. Just follow along for a little trap prep. Trap prep, yeah, yeah, a little trap prep, a little track prep here at VCD. All right, everybody, we're back here. I did fail to mention in the intro that we are also going to do the Hasport mounts for the Type R. We already have the rear one, but we're gonna do the two mounts that go up here as well. We're also going to change out these heat shields with some ceramic or thermal coated ones. They look like this. And we're also going to wrap the front pipe with the DEI titanium wrap. Bear in mind, if you live in Cali, good luck trying to get that unless you've got a plug. But basically, this is what we're gonna wrap the front pipe with. Now, the boys over here at VCD are gonna walk us through how to do these mounts. All right, in order to be able to access this area here, we have to remove this shroud here and we have to remove the radiator shroud below in order to give us some space to be able to get in there and attempt to remove this guy and this. Also, we have to take the inlet pipe off. I'm gonna start taking care of that. All right, spot check, here we are. We've removed the radiator shroud. It is a pain in the rear. You gotta loosen up all these clips. As you can see here, you gotta unplug this bad boy. And you gotta be careful, if not you're gonna rip these little tabs. We moved into the part where we've disassembled the inlet pipe. And in the prior videos, you guys have seen how to take it on and off. And now, we've taken the 12 uh, millimeter bolts that go here, here, and down there. We've taken those off. This will come off. Once this comes off, we're gonna remove this bottom one down here. And once we get to that one, we're gonna start installing the new ones. All right, we're running into a little bit of a situation here. This is held by four screws. We got one here, one down here. You got another one on the other side. And you got one, unfortunately, that's hidden right here behind the turbo. Our option is to remove the down pipe to be able to get to it. You're looking at it in this orientation. We can access these three, but this one's the one that sits right underneath the turbo shell or manifold. And that's where we're running into the issue. I really hope we can get it on. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, we're removing the tray now. Once we get that, we'll have access to the mount. Okay, we got the battery tray out. It's kind of annoying. I'm gonna have to disconnect this guy here. Have to push up, try and get the tray to slide out. It is a pain in the butt. Then use a pry tool, right, Lewis, to pull this mm -hmm. little clip out down here to get the main wiring harness loose. Then we're also just loosening up here. What we're gonna do is we're just going to take the bolts out move this thing over so we can have access to the transmission now and as you see the hands of the magician here oh wow she gone we'll find her later she cut all that out <laughs> that's what i waited for be very careful here boys and girls might come out being an expensive day well not for me <laughs> okay, so that that out. That's the tank. It's gone for priority. It's great. Little 
the flyers, Morris. I don't know, Morris is somewhere else right now. Not paying attention to this. Yeah. We've exposed the transmission mount. Have? We've taken out all the bolts necessary. I mean, this is quite an undertaking so far. If you're not 100% comfortable with doing all this, you should bring it over here to the guys <laughs> over at BCD. Because to be honest with you, it does seem very simple. There's a lot of stuff that's come out. And I'm sure the average Joe can do it, but let's come here. Let's have him and- Look at this car. It looks like we're about to like him. apart it. Yeah, literally, look at this. Wow, we just lost another tool. You had something in here? So far, so far the car has eight, two sockets, two. And this guy has lost both of them so far. Nah, it's not, it's not a good morning today. All right. We found the two sockets that we lost. We are having to remove the downpipe. And that's because I want to put this in. And without removing it, we can't reach the screw that's holding it on. So I'm sweating here, sweating, while Lewis is just telling me, just relax, it's gonna be okay. And again, boys and girls, if you guys don't have what you need to do the right job, don't even try, because this right here will cost you a lot of money if the things go to, go to hell, and I think, we're okay. We're okay. Now we're good. Okay. I guess we're okay. Look, look. White palms. White palms and sweaty. I'm gonna do this all day, right? <laughs> we got it done. Just don't do it. Just don't do it at home. Don't yeah, yeah. Just bring it to a professional like this guy. Otherwise, uh, you could run into... Oh yeah, maybe I should show. <laughs> you can run into this kind of situation here. This young lad took his car to a muffler shop to get a muffler delete and ended up saying, hey, can you guys put a downpipe and a front pipe on my car? So what did they do? They ended up putting it on. They didn't torque it down, first of all, right? Second of all, they broke three studs, three studs and tightened it on with one and sent him on his way. And when he showed up here at the shop, there was a gap. See this gap? You could see that ring basically in between. That's how loose this was. And as you could tell, look, this is what happens when you do shit jinky or you go to the wrong place. That's why we're here. We're gonna continue with this. I'll check back whenever we get onto the mounts. We're right. checking in again. All right, so it's been a rough. It's been a rough afternoon. Okay, here. okay, we're back. Better than ever. We don't know what's gonna happen over here. But the mount is pretty much done. You have three 17s, one there, one there, one there and then four in the trans. As you can tell, it looks like a hot mess over here. There's a lot of stuff you have to remove just to get to this little bad boy down here. Now we have this off. Um, you do need a jack to pretty much sustain half of the motor up for a second. Please use a piece of wood to hold the transmission. You don't put a hole through it. Now, yeah, we're out. This is the old one. And also bear in mind that when you loosen the bolts, the motor will shift. There was definite shifting going on, but that's why the jack and the transmission block that he put underneath is there to hold everything. Cool, so now we have this. We already pre-built these. Yours is probably look like a bunch of random pieces of metal, but this is how it should look basically at the end. This is your actual frame piece. This is your mount, and then this is gonna be the transmission mount, this part of it, okay? So this is specific for Type R. S size will not fit on R's, and R's will not fit on S size. Okay. And this is the uh, 62A compound, which is the street version. Let's slide this bad boy in. Should look a little bit like this. Okay, is the mount in already? Remember, you might need to play with your your uh, floor jack to push up the transmission and get everything to line back up. So some of these bolts will not be reused from the OEM. We are using these stock stud still from the trans and then we're a little bit too high on the trans the little jack we're using on the transmission so we are going to have to lower and adjust as you can see none of these holes up here are aligned so we're going to have to lower the transmission a little bit more but this is all part of the process okay the hardware that Passport provides comes with some extra washers you will retain the OEM studs that I just pointed out to you a second ago and they will provide you though with some washers 
like Lewis is doing now. And then these will be the ones that are going to replace these. And again, this time I paid for the proper package, the torque package. <laughs> It's an insider go but we are going to make sure that once all this is in they are tightened to the proper torque necessary because the last thing you need is a, a loose bolt or nut flying off when you're on track or generally when you're driving that'd be bad okay we went ahead and got this mount in right now not everything is torqued to spec it's just holding everything and you can see right here, this is the ground cable that's going to attach to this guy right there. See that? Let me get in there so you can see what I'm talking about. See, this cable goes right here. And we just need to tighten everything down to torque specs. Remember, when you're putting all this together, you're going to want to torque it nice and tight as well. All right, we're all done here. We're all set. Went ahead and torqued everything down properly. Everything's tight. We just need to attach that ground wire and we'll be all set. And then we can start putting back together this half and we can deal with the other half. I know this video comes with three mounts. There's plenty of mount videos on the rear motor mount. I don't know if you did the video for that. But basically the rear motor mount is pretty self-explanatory. It's two bolts and then you just pry the engine back and forth and that's about it. So we already have it in this one, so we're not installing that one today. I'll give you an idea of what it looks like when I'm showing you how to take off again the, the front, front pipe, pipe yeah. and we're gonna rewrap it. So I'll give you an idea of where it's at and what you're gonna have to do. But this is the mount right here that comes with the kit. I don't need it, because I already have it. And anyway, that's that. We're gonna move on to the other side. And remember, your car's not gonna look this blown up. It's just, I'm doing four things at once here today we're trying to condense this stick with us okay next step after we've done all this is we're putting back the battery tray remember there's what is this 10 mil 12 12 mil 12 12 and then there's one underneath here somewhere one here. and one down here that you all that you guys have to make sure you put back in i'll show you once you're screwing them on then you have some 10 mils here that hold this bracket and you got another one that holds this, which is some of the battery cables. Make sure you tighten all this down nice and tight. Your battery's gonna go here and you don't need a loose battery. This is a lengthy install. It's not too hard. I'll give it like a good six or seven, but there's a lot of stuff involved when you're working on this. Okay, there's, you can see, no lighting's bad. Once he removes it, I'll try and give you guys an idea of where those two bolts go. Okay. One. We're going to try to show you. Okay, There's dude. one. The other one's all in the back. Right here. Right, right there. Yeah. Behind this line. It's hard to get to. There it is, right there. And it's a pain to get there. You gotta be careful because there's a clutch line right there. This is the housing that assemble that holds your ECU down. And be careful, like I said, when you put this back in, because you see all these little teeth, you bend one of these and uh, good luck. Good luck. Okay, we're moving on to the passenger side mount. We started by removing the 10 mils that hold the reservoir in place. There's one, there's two. And then we're gonna take off this other little 10 mil that holds a ground cable. And then we're gonna remove these, what are these, 18s? They're 17s and then, no, actually these three are 19s. And then these two bottom ones are 17s. And then these are 14s. Whoa, okay. Okay, so, and then we gotta remove this AC line right here to get to the floor tube back there. And be careful with your AC lines, boys and girls. The last thing you need is no AC. No AC on already a shaky AC. I guess uh, on some of the on some of the first production ones, they were wherever the seams that they welded the condensers to or whatever, they were having issues. And then uh, I don't know, mine 
you gotta really lower the AC for it to feel nice and cold. Like kind of keep it at like between 70 and 71 for it to feel cold. You know what? That's the first time I've actually thought about that. That is yeah. true. I, I feel like my car gets colder when it's on the lowest setting. Yeah. It's like it's gotta go down to the lowest, lowest for it to feel nice and ice cold, which is weird. But anywho, we're we're here. We're gonna take this off. I'll spot check once we're gonna remove this. And I think the same process is gonna take place where we need to put the floor jack with the piece of wood underneath under the, oil the oil pan so that way you don't make a hole in your oil pan and you're able to sustain the motor once it goes free from this mount right here. Okay, so <laughs> you take this 14, no, no kidding. You remove this 14 from here, you remove the 14 that's there. This bracket comes off. Right After we go to this, we can move out of the way. Okay, so. like you said, once you remove this bracket, it gives you more room to move this out of the way completely. As you guys can tell, this is a process in itself. Just yeah, I, I honestly have seen a few videos where dudes do it in their driveway and low-key it looks pretty simple but i mean now tackling this honestly pay for someone like lewis who can do this with his eyes closed and he can get you in and out with minimal issues because the last thing you need to do is not torque something right bust a line lose a socket or something where it forces you to tear apart your car and you're in a bigger situation than when you started like we would tell everybody like look at the end of the day, like if you don't have the correct stuff to do this and it's going to be in your driveway and you're going to spend like five, six hours, is at that point, is it going to be worth it to be doing it? I mean, it, I'm not, we're not even saying to come here. Like you can go to anywhere else, a performance shop, anywhere that does these type of things. Preferably here. Well, I mean, yeah, preferably here. But I'm saying like at the end of the day, if you don't like not everyone lives in California. So, I mean, this is obviously something that holds the whole engine up and just to be safe and make sure everything is fine. We would prefer that you, as a you know audience, would actually go and do it the correct way the first time, and you don't have to be under the ground trying to do this like for like four, eight plus hours, you know. For real, I think this would have taken me a hot minute at home. Jack stand with the block of wood. So at home, you would need to jack the car, put it on stand. Yes. So yes. So you're already invested. So you're already invested. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we're all over here, but literally, yes. You would have to jack your car up, put it on jack stands, safety is key. Then you're gonna need the same, you're gonna need something like this to take yeah, these mounts off. I, this smaller 19, it doesn't fit all the way with the stud. So if you see the difference, so you need to use a half inch. Yeah, so see it. And, and having the right tool makes the job a hell of a lot. And then you can smoother. see your whole motor just shifted right there. Yeah. And if you're on the ground, you're gonna it's gonna be a little, uh, <laughs> All right, we're gonna remove this bad boy. He needs to remove those two bolts. And once we remove those bolts, everything will be completely free. Well, actually, the motor is free now, right? Yeah, now it's free. Okay, so yeah, now we remove this guy out of the way. Do this. It comes out. You obviously do this a lot. <laughs> Stock motor mount. Upgraded hash port. The 62. 62A bushing. bushing. And we'll show you how much play this has. This has a lot of play in it compared to what we're putting in. And I know your guys' question is gonna be, will the car have a lot more vibration? You're gonna feel the car vibrating a lot more. But again, remember, this is part of the game when you're doing this. And this is all just to make sure that the car runs tip top when we're at the track. This is what it's for. We're not doing this for comfort. This is for speed. Just, just think about this. Like, would you prefer coming out of a corner and you're dropping from 30 miles an hour and you're trying to punch it to 120 and your engine just starts to slightly shift and then now because of that slight shift now your wheels are skipping on on the track and you're losing grip or would you prefer the car to be as solid as possible and you have that full contact the entire time you know this is kind of the whole thing is like you're, you're you're giving up your comfort but if you're tracking and you're drag racing or anything like you know what's up already you should know what's up like it shouldn't be like it shouldn't be a question about oh if i should do it if 
if or oh is it gonna feel right or no, no come on like you know what you're doing like, you know exactly what you're doing everything we've done to the car we've, we've just improved it to become the track monster that it is that's that's basically what we're doing here okay and then now uh, here's another technical thing these are the stock lower ones that go onto the frame so you see the difference in that little gap right there so we need those threads here so now we're going to use these smaller ones because there's less material on the actual mount i'm going to put these down here and as you can see there's a lot of space because of this see that we're going to lose these but hasport does provide you with hardware in order to pretty much achieve the same thing yeah, and then with this, their mounts. You see the thickness of this mount? It's gonna be almost the same as OEM. So we can still use these stock 19s. And basically we're gonna convert the bottom ones to a smaller uh, in length 19 instead of 17s. So we're gonna put these back on. Here's your 19 nut. And then we're gonna add the new washer for the ground cable. And then we're gonna connect this here. And there you go, your mount's gonna be on it. So we're gonna just finish this up. We're gonna torque everything down. And we should probably have all this already ready to go. Basically the same way you took it off is the same way you should go back on. Like there should be nothing left over. And you guys just remember, take this, this little bracket off for the AC line. You can add this back on. I usually use a, a 14 um, ratcheting wrench right here. And I add the bottom one. And this one, I just use the gun and it should go all the way down. Some of, this, some of these threads are actually a tight. Uh, they're not OEM, but it still will go in. Just if you want, if you're having a hard time putting them in, do it by hand first. Uh, but it should thread in. It's just, these are just a little bit, uh, obviously they're all machine or CNC, so they're all slightly tight. But everything should go in. Everything is pretty much made for the R and it's made just to plug and play. A few moments later. Okay, we, we're here underneath. I just wanna show you guys what the Hasport mount looks like installed. Now to remove it, it is a little bit of a process. You're gonna have to get this bolt down here. You're gonna have to remove that one first, then you start taking this one out. When you, when you start backing this one out, sometimes you have to remove the actual downpipe out of the way. Other times you're able to keep it the way it is and still pull it out. If you have the stock one, you'll see there's a little arch in the front pipe that allows the nut to keep going. Um, in one of my videos, you'll be able to see that. Otherwise, when you do this, you might need a pry bar here or you might need to put it in here to push it back into place once you've removed it. Um, this one is stiff. And, and since it's a lot more robust, a lot thicker in this area here, sometimes you need to grab like a, a, a rubber mallet to really push it in and get it into position. And same thing, once you put this bolt through, you, you put the bolt while this piece is down, you slide it in and then you push it in and as you start tightening it, that's where you, it starts getting in place. Same thing back here, just go straight in. And you're good to go. There are plenty of videos to show you this. So I don't need to get into details with this guy here. I wish we would have shown you the install, but really, I mean, I already have it on. There's no point to take it off again. But now we're gonna remove the spoon front pipe in order to wrap it. And all I'm doing is trying to mitigate the heat that this sucker gives off when we're on track. Lewis is just gonna show us how he's wrapping the front pipe. You want to make sure you get nice, uniform, even wraps all the way around so it doesn't get loose. And he <laughs> likes to wet it because he feels that the wrap is a little bit more pliable. And at the same time, once it dries, it's nice and tight on the front pipe itself. How did you get this? <laughs> we'll say that off camera. Now I want to know. They all might be watching. I'm sure they watch. So when they pull you over, they know what you have in your car. <laughs> oh, we've seen you on YouTube. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Are you a subscriber? <laughs> it's not rocket science. You just, like I said, you want to make sure that your wraps are nice and tight. And that you're doing it nice and uniform. You want to give yourself about an inch or two 
in between wraps. And you might need to overlay a little bit. Doubt it. Several bad puns later. Okay, we're all done here wrapping everything up. I'm showing you a quick little way of wrapping. We didn't want to get fully, fully in depth on it just because again, there's a thousand videos on how to wrap front pipes and down pipes and all this good stuff. Just did it really quick. And again, Lewis did his little signature, little double zip type thingy that he does. So if you're in the SoCal area and you've had this guy work on your shit, you're gonna have the double ones. That's his signature. Because Morris doesn't do anything. Yeah, that's why this guy's called the trusty free labor assistant. Okay, so Lewis is putting back in the downpipe. Uh, <laughs> Look at him. I guess he does this quite often. Okay. Yeah, we went ahead and got from PRL all the necessary hardware that's needed for their downpipe and what I mean by that is this guy right here if you can see it right there and way up there there's another little one so the little adapters because the stock one is way wider and remember we are retaining the stock heat shields okay we're back to installing and yes we've switched up cameras the GoPro died we've been doing this shit way too long today so like that that like this. Oh yeah, so the car that's over there, they brought it in wondering why is my check engine light, why is it making so much noise, and that's exactly how much the downpipe looked from the turbo. And literally it was missing this one. No, it was this one, that one, and the other one, and I just had this one, and this yeah. one was like crossfitted. <laughs> it was horrible. Again, that's why I say bring it to the right people. He works on tensions all day, week, month long. He knows what he's doing. Look over there. You know. Five. Five. <laughs> five. Look at all these things. Okay. Downpipes back in. Put in all the stock PRL hardware that we went ahead and ordered from them. Shout out to PRL for shipping that out super quick. We're going to put the top shroud back on in a second. Once we put this bad boy on, it's going to look nice, sleek. All right, y'all, we're almost done here. Everything's been looking amazing on the car once we put it on. Heat shields are in, this looks great. Passport mounts looking fly. And downpipes looking hella clean too. We just need to put it back on the car. We'll be done here today, boys. We took the car around the block over at BCD. We pushed it around a little bit, took some corners. I was 100% satisfied in this product will say that Hasport has made an exceptional product. Everything has been tip top. Nothing gave us an issue with the installation. Everything was super clean. All the parts just came right off and on. No modifications needed whatsoever. So that I will give it up to Hasport and their designers on such an excellent product. Number two, the response in the wheels, the response in the feel of the car has been night and day. I've driven this car home and I've driven it around since I got home and the response is night and day. The car feels so much more planted. Almost like I told you guys when I got the different tires and wheels for the car, it just went from here to here as far as like responsiveness, the plantedness on the car if that's even a word but when you're going in high rpms i revved this up to 6500 shifted down in the second no grind for me number two it just just power just connected to the car i took it to third fourth gear redlined as well same deal just 100 percent responsiveness downshifted from that four gear in 6500 rpms down in the third gear and i did not feel the engine rock at all i did it the same thing going from third into second around the turn here in the neighborhood same thing no type of rocking motion uh, and you guys know if you guys have a stock type r you guys know that this engine rocks on you a little bit especially if you do not have the rear hasport motor mount if you do not plan on getting this 
but you do plan on tracking your car or I mean, if you just want a little bit better feeling, put that rear motor mount in the car. You will thank me. I guarantee you. Just like with the rigid collars, you will thank me when you do that. It is a simple modification and not to mention it helps the motor from moving back and forth. Guaranteed uh, that product will not disappoint you. And if you do or have thought about wanting to replace your motor mounts, again, make sure you know what you're getting yourself into, but these motor mounts so far have been tip top for this car. I am gonna drive the car around. I will write up a formal review. We might do a double review with the uh, spoon exhaust and the Hasport mounts, because I have been promising that. I have been getting hit up about it, and I haven't forgot about you boys. I just have been making sure that we have all these parts put in the car before we go to the track next week. And I wanna make sure that we got all this buttoned up, all shaken down in case anything for any reason was loose so far. It's been tip top so far. The boys over at VCD always keep the car tip top. So anywho, I wanna thank you guys again for sticking in this long in the video. I know this has been a marathon session. I've tried to cut down the amount of video time just to make sure everybody stays focused with me and keeps watching. But again, thanks again for everybody for watching. Thanks for clicking. Thanks for liking and subscribing to our channel. I will keep trying to pump out some more videos for everybody. And again, we'll catch you out on the track, boys. See you soon.